Hi, Paolo Mauli here, ready to cook up some delicious food with you today. This is the first of a two-parter. This is the real short part because we're going to be making grilled burritos. And this part is just mainly getting the beans ready because we're going to make our own refried beans and they're really, really good. I think once you try this recipe for refried beans, you won't want any more of the canned ones or some of the ones you might buy in a deli. These are very tasty. And you'll see as you make them with me. And I can tell you that uh, the smell in the house while the beans are cooking, if anybody comes to your door or say your loved one comes home while you're cooking and smells that, they're going to be starving. It's a wonderful, wonderful aroma. And you'll see if you try this, I hope you will. And I realize I am an Italian and most of my foods are Italian made, but I also love Mexican food. When I moved to California from New York, I fell in love with the tastes and the aromas of all the different Mexican foods, so I decided to learn to make them. And so this is one of those recipes that I'd like to pass on to others because I very rarely have tasted the same combination that I use. So let's get started. And first thing is this gigantic bag of pinto beans, frijoles pinto. And this is a CNF company, whatever company you get. Costco sells big bags too. This is a 25 pound bag, lasts you a while, but these don't spoil and they're good uh, survival food too to keep in the house. But uh, they're already, they say, triple cleaned and prepared. We're going to get started opening the bag. And what we want, I have a large pot here that we're going to use because what we have to do today is get the beans soaking. They have to soak for at least 24 hours. So we want to get them started and I have my measuring cup and I'm going to measure six cups put this here so you can see. six cups of beans into well actually I want to do this first. I'm getting ahead of myself. Six cups of beans we're going to put into this bowl first. Because even though these say triple cleaned and they really look it, I like to rinse even before I soak them. So one, two, three, four. These are really nice beans. I like this one. Okay. So now I've got my beans in here. Six cups. Down. And all I'm going to do is rinse them in the sink here. If you have the sprayer, you can use the sprayer. It's likely you're not going to see any weird stuff in here, anything floating, any dirt or anything else, but just in case, I believe most of these are packaged by machine and something could get missed, so I always like to rinse them first. And then I've got my colander strainer here. And then rinse them again. I rinse them in the bowl first because if there's any kind of dirt or sticks or anything else that might be in there, they would float to the top and I didn't see any. And now I'm just rinsing these off to make sure they're super clean. Shake them off a little bit. I'll rest them on the bowl here for a second. And before I add them to the pot, I'm going to put some water in the pot first. Some. I don't know how high the level is going to be once I put all those beans in there. Now, to, to soak the beans, we're not going to be adding any seasonings as they soak. Seasonings will all get added tomorrow 
when we cook them. So this is basically to hydrate the beans, to they'll puff out, they'll start to soften a little, little bit. And you'll see the big difference when you open this up tomorrow. You see there's a couple of little skins in there from the beans. Leave those out. And now what you want to do is add water until the pot is three quarters full. No higher than that because these beans are going to expand as they soak overnight and they're going to rise a little bit and then push the water level up and if you have too much water in there, you're going to have a mess. So three-fourths full. And I know it seems like a lot to go through to make burritos, but if you do this, you're going to love them. And you get a lot from this recipe. You can keep them in the refrigerator for a week and just eat some each day, or you can freeze them. They freeze really well. And just reheat them in the microwave. Very, really very good. But when you smell the aroma of these beans cooking, guarantee you, you will like to make them. You put in the extra. So I'm stirring them around just to make sure they're all loose there in the water. And you want to put a cover on here. Like so. Keep them covered. If you don't have a cover for your pot, just put some aluminum foil over it. I don't think it matters if they're exposed to light because they're only soaking 24 hours. They're not going to start growing. But I still prefer to have them just completely covered. And I'm just going to set this pot aside on a counter in my dining area until tomorrow. Tomorrow we will continue by taking the beans out of here. We'll rinse them one more time and then we'll start cooking them and you'll see all the different spices and uh, ingredients that we add to give all this wonderful flavor to these beans that are going to be the filling inside the burritos along with some cheese too and some taco sauce which you will see. That the, the good thing about these is once they're all formed they're going to be grilled which gives them a really really nice flavor. It melts the cheese in there too. Really good. So for today that's all we're going to do. I'm just going to set this aside till tomorrow morning, 24 hours from now, and then we'll continue. And I really hope you try this. See you tomorrow. Hello again, Paolo here, and it's another day. Yesterday, you remember that we got the beans soaking, and today we're going to continue making our grilled burritos by doing the refried beans first. So here's the pot, which of course, this is a video, so it was just a second ago that you saw this, <laughs> even though it's 24 hours for me. Take the cover off, and I don't know if you can see inside the pot here that the beans have really swelled quite a bit, and they're almost up to the top of the water. So now what we want to do, we want to drain the water out of the beans because we're not using the water that they soaked in. So I'm on the garbage disposal side of the sink. I'm just pouring out water carefully so the beans don't all fall out in the sink too. And once I reach the tipping point, which you can tell as the beans start to move, I'm going to stop. And now what I'm going to do is I have here, move this over a little bit, a colander. Actually, you can't see that. Let me move the camera a little bit so you can see. I have no cameraman. I have to do this all on my own, so I have to do adjustments now and then. I can't help it. Okay, so now you can see here's the uh, colander, and I've got one of these slotted ladles. I'm just going to dump some of the beans in there. There's still a lot of water down below, but I'm just trying to get some of the beans out so that 
they don't fall out when I try to dump out the water. And of course, there's not enough room in this one colander for all these beans. You can see how nice they look. They actually already smell pretty nice. These are really good beans. I like this particular brand. Okay, shake it out a little bit. And what we're going to do with these beans is I have a great big pot here. Okay. Large, very large pot. I'm going to put some water in here because I don't want the beans to stick to the bottom of the pot as I'm putting them in, so I just want a small layer of water for now because the after soaking all that time the beans could stick to the bottom of the pot as they sit while we prepare all the rest of the ingredients. So just a couple of inches of water, that's all. And now I can dump... Well, actually, what I think... I'll rinse these again. You don't have to do this because they've already soaked, but I like to rinse them. If there's any extra starch on there or anything, they'll come off. Just a quick rinse. They're already clean. And of course they don't have to drain and dry because they're going back in water anyway. I just want to rinse off any extra starch that might be on there. So I'm just going to dump this into the big pot right here. Colander back, shake it a little bit, go off to the side, and now I might be able to, let me see, pour some of these beans into here. You can see, I gotta move it where you can see it. Pour some, dump out the water. Otherwise it'll overflow. I don't know if you saw how brown that water was. So you don't want to use that. You don't want any extra starch or coloring or anything. You see that? See how brown that water is? Okay, got the last of our beans. Shake, rinse. Just a quick rinse. Shake. dump them in that big pot. So now all the beans are in the pot. Okay, now I can, while the camera's over here, I might as well do some other stuff. Into that pot is going to go an onion. So uh, let's prepare the onion. Well, I'm here on this side so you can see me. I'll do that here. Actually, I should move the camera just a little more this way. I think that's better. Yeah. So what I want to do, I'm going to cut the ends off. This is my onion knife. Ah. See that? Rotten. If you get a rotten onion, don't use it. Throw it out. Even if it's just rotten part of it, because you don't want to ruin your whole dish with a bad onion. Rinse the knife off. The onion was bad. It happens. Luckily I have other onions. This one's perfect. Always buy extra onions when you're going to make something because you never know if you're going to get a bad one. If you buy exactly the amount you need, you're going to end up short.
short. You go to cut one open and it's rotten. Now this onion, what we're going to do is cut it. I have it resting on end here. Just go down this way and then lay the two halves down like so and then just slice down like this. Eighth of an inch or an hour. If you've watched a video of mine before, you'll know that I have separate knives for onion and garlic. Now the very end of the onion, I'm just going to throw into the bin. What this is going to do is as the beans cook and the onion boils in the water with the beans, it's practically going to dissolve into the water. This is going to boil for three hours and then it'll mash into the beans and give them a wonderful flavor. So, cause this is going to, what's going to happen is these are going to break up see, into little slices, pieces. Okay, there's one big, that was the end there. Those big, tough ends, if you find any, then just throw them in there. Or if you don't have one of these little garbage bins on your sink for food garbage, then throw them in your big garbage. So here's the onion. This goes in the pot with the beans. Just throwing it in. And while I have the onion knife out, I'm going to cut another onion that we're going to use later. Just save it. I've got a plastic container here because we're going to be putting the raw onion in the cooked beans before we put them inside the flour tortillas for grilling and the boiling hot beans because we're going to add it while they're still boiling hot are going to wilt the onion enough that then when we grill the burrito the onion will be cooked the beans. So it'll be just right. Okay, let me wipe off some onion skin on there. Alright, now to get the onion into dice tiny pieces, I'm going to cut this way first, uh, about an eighth of an inch, and hold the onion together as you do this. Don't go all the way down, about a little more than three-fourths of the way down. And then turn, flip it around like that. Do it again. Okay, so now we've sliced it this way. Now I'm going to turn it 90 degrees like that. And I'm going to go down the other way. And you have to hold it together with your hand or it will fall apart. Slice down. Don't go all the way down. If you go all the way down, it's going to just come apart and have a mess. Then you have to do it the hard way, mincing it by hand. So now you can see what we've got there. When I turn it on its side and slice down, I'm trying to see where I am here. Now I get little tiny pieces of onion. Diced onion. Just slice it down. And go to the point where it ended as you were cutting the crosshatch pattern. I'm going to dump it into the plastic container. To save for later, it's one less step we'll have to do later on once the beans are cooked. 
continue with my onion. Okay, now I've reached the bottom part of the onion where the knife hadn't cut through, so now I'm going to take the, the outer tough ring off and just slice this up by hand into small, small pieces. Just a little bit, so I'm going to take that one. Any really hard pieces of onion, just throw them out. Because this is the onion that you're actually going to be eating in the burrito. So you only want the more tender. You don't want that outer layer of onion that's a little tough. Just chop, chop. going to wilt the beans, the hot beans are going to wilt it some, and then the actual grilling process will wilt the rest of it, and it will be fine. Into the garbage disposal. So there's the onion. Cover it, put it in the refrigerator, and we're ready with that. Okay, now let me move the camera again. here so I can see what the heck I'm doing here so you can see the stove a little bit too there we go a little higher no that's fine sorry about all the movement okay I gotta flip this around so I can see what I'm doing okay now we've got some other ingredients we have to do I have to get this pot out of here. I'll wash it in a little bit um, so here we've got our beans with onion in there, okay. Next ingredient will be garlic. So I can do that over here, you don't have to watch. You're just going to be peeling the garlic. I'll use a different plate for that. I have cutting boards, but I'm not in the mood to deal with them, so I'm just going to use... I'm just going to use a paper plate and I'm just going to break off six cloves of garlic. One, two, three, get that skin. Garlic skin is very nice. Four, five. And if you get a really small clove, just add another one. So make it seven instead of six. One, two, three, six. One's kind of small, I'm down to the end of this anyway. So I'll make it seven. Okay. Put the garlic away. And make my garlic knife out. Now I'm going to trim the garlic, get the skin off. I have foam bowls over here so I can throw it throw the cleaned clove in a foam bowl. dishes that I make, I put the garlic through a garlic press because it takes all that excess fiber and separates it out so you don't get it in your intestinal tract which causes intestinal problems and especially gas because your body cannot digest that fiber. As it's passing through and the body tries to process the fiber, it's going to cause gas, which can cause pain. So you don't want that. 
Now some people's system, for some reason, they're able to, and I was actually when I was younger, they're able to eat whole garlic and it doesn't bother them. Whether they have more potent bacteria in there or something about their system that just passes the garlic through, I don't know. But I know for myself, I cannot anymore, I'm much older now, have raw garlic or that fiber part of the garlic, which comes out when you use the garlic press. But because this is going to boil for three hours, these beans, the garlic will be boiled in there too, plus we'll be able to pull out the cloves before we mash the beans. So you don't have to, just make sure you get all the skin off. You don't have to put them through the garlic press. It's not necessary. Now I'm going to take these garlic cloves and cut them in half. Just to give more area for the flavor to come out as these boil. So there's the garlic. Throw that in the big pot, and that's done. These garlic skins, I'm going to rinse my hands. So we've got the beans, that little bit of water so far, the onion, the garlic. Next, next is going to be fresh ginger root. I know a lot of people don't usually buy this, but it's a wonderful thing to have around. You can make tea with it and use it in all kinds of cooking. You make wonderful uh, ginger cookies or ginger cakes. It's really good. So what you want to do with this is peel it first. So I've got my little peeler here. And I'm just going to slowly, because the peeler will get stuck in the clammy of this thing. So don't go too fast, you don't want to cut yourself. Just peel the skin off. Where you have one of these big knobs, just snap that off. Just trying to get a nice, clean piece of ginger. Just getting all that brown skin off. And it does come off and it's not that bad. Just got to go slow with the peeler. I love this peeler. I've had it for years and it's really good. our ginger root. So what I want to do with that, I've used the dish from the onion. I can't use my onion knife, it doesn't matter. I'm going to slice the ginger into a couple of chunks. Maybe about an inch. I'm not cutting it into regular slices, just chunks. We just want this to flavor. We're not going to mash it in the beans. So I get three chunks out of this. This is going to give a wonderful flavor to the beans, believe it or not. These are some of the different things that are in my refried beans compared to other standard refried beans you may have eaten or bought in the can or whatever. Okay, now let me move the camera again a little bit so you can see me. I'm just going to raise it up a bit, move it over so you can see the pot too. Okay. Alright, 
So now we're ready to add more stuff. And we've got the ginger. The next ingredient is cilantro. I love cilantro. Some people hate it, but it's actually very good for you. It's antibacterial. It's good for your system. Uh, it has a powerful flavor, but you get used to it. When I was a kid, I hated cilantro. But as I got older, I learned to love it. And now, oh, I just love it. This, I grow it actually, too. But I don't have enough for some of these big dishes. So what you want to do, we're not going to use the stems. So I'm just going to grab the top part, the leaves, twist the stems off, throw them out. If you're making egg rolls at home, you can use the stems, chop them up in your vegetable mixture for the filling of the egg rolls. Because if you use the leaves, by the time all the vegetables are cooked, the leaves are so wilted and mushy, you don't even taste them. Now, of course, these are going to get really wilted in the um, pot as the beans boil for three hours, but that's okay because we're going to mash. Some of the cilantro will get mashed into the beans, which will give it nice flavor. And we don't really want to see the cilantro anyway. So what I've done is i put it in a paper towel and just dry it a little bit. And the whole thing just goes in the pot. I don't have to cut it, nothing. Easy. Just throw it in the pot. So we've got our cilantro. Now we've, oh, one other ingredient for the spices. I buy these in the grocery store. Bay leaves. These are the fresh bay leaves, not the dried ones. If all you have is the dried ones, go ahead and use them. But I'm just using one of the fresh bay leaf. Throw it in the pot. Gives a nice aroma and flavor. And now the spices. So I'm going to start with, actually let me add some more water first. Okay, so here we have the pot with the beans, the onion, the cilantro. I'm going to go ahead and fill it up half full with water. You can't add the water until after these solid things are in there so you know what level you're going up to. Because if you put the water first and then add the beans and the onion and the garlic and the cilantro, the water level starts rising and it might get too high. You have to leave room for this to boil and it's going to rise up a bit as it's boiling. You've got to have enough room that you don't want this to boil all over your stove and make a mess. Then you have to clean it up. Okay, half full. So I filled the pot half full. Just put it back here for a minute. And this is very important. The first thing I'm going to put in. Ortega Taco Seasoning. This is the only one I use. I don't like to be advertising for one particular company, but I can't help it. Nobody makes taco seasoning like Ortega. This, when you smell this cooking in with those beans, you'll go crazy, believe me. So what we're gonna do is you want a half a cup of Ortega seasoning into this pot. And yes, it's a lot, but this is a big container. I always buy this large container. Don't buy those little tiny spice containers. It's not enough. I buy big ones, and I always keep an extra one in the house. So there's our Ortega taco seasoning. Next, we're going to put a tablespoon of powdered cumin. Another spice that I used to hate that I love now. I love cumin. I love the smell, the aroma. It's got a wonderful fragrance. So I've got a tablespoon, one tablespoon of cumin. Goes in there. And next I have 
ground jalapeno pepper. And in that I'm putting a half teaspoon of ground jalapeno pepper. If you don't have ground jalapeno pepper, just skip it. You got coarse ground black pepper. That everybody has, I think. You want a half teaspoon of coarse ground black pepper. It's a different, try and get fresh pepper. I just bought this uh, a couple of weeks ago because when it's fresh, the smell of the pepper is fantastic. As it gets older, it loses its fragrance. Okay, now we need salt. Now, is this seem, going to seem like a lot of salt, but it's not because we got a lot of beans in there, a lot of water, and so this salt, you're not even going to taste it. So I got a third of a cup, and this salt, you can see it's pink. This is the pink Himalayan salt, which is not as salty as the white table salt. Um, if you use kosher salt, cut it down to um, a fourth of a cup or an eighth of a cup, actually, maybe. But with the pink salt, a third of a cup is fine. And then we also are going to add one fourth cup of sugar. Yes, sugar. It helps in the cooking, stabilizes, and you won't even notice it, believe me. With all that water and all those beans, you're not going to even taste the sugar. But it will help with the cooking process. And now I'm going to stir a big wooden spoon in here somewhere. Here we go. A big wooden spoon. I like to use wood so you don't get any metal taste. And you'll notice this is one of those composite type pots. Uh, it's like the one you use when you go camping. Enamelware, I guess they call it. And so you don't get any metal taste in there. Um, there's a lot of spices and things in here that can react with metal. So I try not to use a metal pot. You could use stainless steel, because stainless steel really won't react. But I prefer to just use the enamelware pot. Okay. Now I'm going to fill this up with water. So it's three-fourths full. No higher than that. You can already smell it as you put the water in. You smell that wonderful Ortega seasoning mix and the cumin. And, oh, what a wonderful smell. Okay, that's it. No higher than three-fourths. I don't know if you can see. Here. Okay, this goes on. Not the biggest burner of the stove, the second one. I have three, four different sizes, actually. And this, I have a huge one, then I have this next bigger one, and the normal size, and then a little tiny one. And we'll get that going. And for now I'm going to keep it on almost full high, because I want it to come to a boil, and then I'm going to turn it down, because this has to simmer, not boil, simmer for three hours. So I'm going to stop the camera and clean up while the pot just sits there. There it is on the stove. And I'll show you again once it comes to a boil. And then we'll set it on the lower flame to simmer and we'll come back in three hours. But for now I'll stop the camera and clean up. See you in a bit. Here I am again. No, it's not boiling yet. Let me flip this so I can see. It's my little viewer on the camera so I can see what you see. And what's something that's important that I didn't mention before, that you're going to have to do while this is cooking over the three hour period, you have to stir. Just in case I got to make sure this. Excuse me, one minute. This camera thing here.
There. These cameras have all these little gadgets on them. Okay. Make sure you stir, like right now, even though it's not boiling yet. Because what happens, remember those beans are heavy and they settle on the bottom. And if you just leave them in position on the bottom like that as this is cooking, uh, the ones that are at the very bottom that keep sitting there are going to get the most heat from the bottom of the pot and they will start to dry up and maybe even burn and then that's going to ruin the taste of all your beans. So I would say every 15 minutes if you have a little kitchen timer or something set the timer and about every 15 minutes just stir a little bit. Make sure you get way down to the bottom and shuffle those beans around so the same ones are not sitting on the bottom. And it also, you'll see the difference because I've had times when I've forgotten or um, I thought, oh, let me try it without stirring. And I was very sorry because that happened. And as I said before, the smell of this as it's cooking is going to fill your whole house and you're going to really like it, believe me. But if those beans begin to burn on the bottom or even just dry up, they get a funny smell and that's going to ruin that wonderful aroma that you're going to really like. So just try to do it. Uh, if you can't do it every 15 minutes, at least every half hour, but every 15 is better. And even now while it's still coming to a boil, because it's going to take a while, it's a huge pot. Uh, I'm stirring it every so often. And the reason I have this great big enamelware pot also that you see here is because at Christmas time, I like to make tamales and I have a nice big basket that goes in there to steam the tamales and they're really good. Um, I bought good tamales sometimes at church. Some ladies make it and sell them chicken, pork, sometimes they have beef. The only thing I don't like about the ones that I buy is they are so stingy with the filling. Most of the tamale is the masa. And I like the masa, don't get me wrong, I love the taste of that, but I want something in there. Even when I make ravioli, I put a lot of filling. I want to taste the filling. So when I make tamales, and maybe at Christmas time I'll do a video of them, I put a lot of filling in that tamale. So when I eat a tamale, I'm not just getting masa in my mouth, I'm getting a nice, healthy amount of filling. So that's the reason I like to make my own. It's a lot of work. You have to be committed to doing tamales. It takes time and uh, you have to cook the pork one day and shred it, and get it ready if you're doing pork or whatever, beef, chicken, has to be prepared ahead of time. Uh, and then the masa mix and then actually uh, soaking the corn husks, lining them with the masa, putting the filling, folding them up, and then steaming them for a couple of hours. So it's a long process. Anytime you buy tamales from someone, know that they put a lot of work and a lot of effort into making those. And if uh, they seem expensive, that's why. But they really are delicious. And if you make your own, you'll never buy store-bought or even ones that someone else makes again. Because you'll get all that filling in there and, oh, it's so good. So maybe at Christmas time we'll do that. For now I'm going to stop because this isn't boiling yet and I'm going to run out of time on this first DVD disc. So I'll pause and come back as soon as it's boiling. Okay, I now had a rolling boil, finally. It takes quite a while with that big pot. And now I'm going to cover it and turn the flame down so it just simmers. But I wanted you to see first, so I'll try to move the camera slowly. It's on a tripod here. But I would like you to see Oops. See that boiling there? There you go. Okay. Move my camera back. Try and set it up without making you sick. All right. So, Oh, I gotta flip my little viewer. There we go. So now that it's boiling, I'm going to put the cover on. I've stirred it already several times. I'm gonna turn the 
burner down. Now there, I have a simmer setting on my burners, but because this pot is so big, if I put it on the simmer setting, it's not enough heat to keep this gigantic pot boiling. So I have it a little bit above that. So you just have to judge. You can see by looking inside. Just cover it, and I have my timer doesn't go up to three hours, so I do one hour at a time. It also helps to remind me to stir often. So start 60 minutes on that timer, and I have another timer with me for every 15 minutes so that I'll come back and stir. And a few times I'll turn the camera back on as I stir, but most of the time you just know what to do that you have to stir. So just come back every 15 minutes and stir. And then once we're at the end and they're all cooked, then I'll show you how to strain them and mash them. And then we'll do the actual burritos and grill them. And at the end, you're going to have something really delicious. You'll be very surprised. And already the smell, the aroma, from these beans cooking with that wonderful, wonderful Ortega taco flavoring and the cumin and onion and garlic and everything that's in there, cilantro. It's going to fill your house. You're going to feel like you're in the best Mexican restaurant. you like it. Trust me. <laughs> and once you make this, I think you'll make it all the time. So for now, I'm going to let you go. And I'm going to go get everything ready for later when we're going to do our grilled burritos. So I'll be back. Well, it's been an hour and 40 minutes or so that the beans are boiling, but I just wanted to come back and pop in. I've been stirring every 15 minutes. I just wanted to show you when you're going to stir, be sure when you pick the cover of the pot up because of the steam that's in there, you use it like a shield so the steam doesn't come at you. Keep it over the pot so the water doesn't drip down into the stove. And when you stir, make sure you get all the way down to the bottom. I should have mentioned this earlier, but you want to make sure you scrape the bottom in case any of those beans did get stuck down there. You don't want them to stick on the bottom and get any kind of burn on there. So the camera's a little crooked right now because I had to stretch it out over here. I had it over to the side. So <laughs> Sorry, I'm at an angle. But uh, when I come back and we actually do the burritos, I'll have it all set up the way it's supposed to be. But I just wanted to pop back in to mention that about stirring it. Make sure you get to the bottom. And be careful when you lift that cover because of the steam. So we've still got a while to go yet, and I'll be back. All right, we're back again. Turn this. And time's up. The beans are ready. So here we go. What I've got, I'm going to move the pot over here. This is very heavy, so be careful. There's the pot of cooked beans, hot, very hot. smells really good. So I know my head is cut off, but I want you to see the food, not me. So don't worry about it. <laughs> now I need some pot holders. And I'm going to run cold water down the disposal because I don't want this boiling hot water to mess up the garbage disposal. I'm just going to pour some of it off. Not a lot. Just a little bit. As soon as I see some of the solid stuff come to the top, I'm going to stop. I'm going to start scooping the beans out of the pot, dumping them into the colander to drain a little bit.
there's the bay leaf. You don't want that, so make sure you take that out. As you're taking the beans out, if you see like a big piece of garlic or something, and I see some here, plastic fork. Take that out. And here's the big hunk of ginger that has to come out. You don't want the ginger in your refried beans. I dropped it right back in. Sorry, it'll come out again. Now the pieces of onion or cilantro that are there, they've been boiled for so long that they're just going to dissolve into the beans when we mash them. So you don't have to pull that out. Just those big hunks of ginger that are there. Having a hard time with the ginger there. See it? There should be about four of those. Beans are nice and soft. You probably could eat this as a bean soup if you wanted to. Add some pasta. Oh, there's one of those big garlics. You can mash the garlic in there if you want to. I just don't want too much. It's already flavored the beans. That was the main reason I put it in. But if you leave the garlic when you mash the beans, the garlic will mash right into the beans too. So it really won't matter. We need to save some of this liquid too. some of this cooking broth, which is actually what it is, it's bean broth now, because of all the vegetables and stuff that are in there. The reason for saving some of this is as we're mashing the beans, if they're too dry, I'm going to add some broth to it. just want to make sure I have enough. I have to add some broth. I have some. Now I'm going to put on the cold water and pour some more of this out. Potato masher. See this? Need one. 
if you're ever going to make refried beans. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the masher down onto the beans. Can't really see it. And twist. As I go down, I twist. And you want to have keep doing that until all the beans are mashed. And as you do that, you're going to see it's going to form like a paste that's going to look like the old familiar refried beans that you see in the can or I don't know if you buy them at a deli or something already made. It'll be what you're used to seeing as refried beans. Now, technically, refried beans, the name means they're refried meaning that after, either while you're mashing them or after you mash them, you put them in a pan and fry them and get the liquid out. But for this burrito recipe and for my refried beans, the way I like them, I do not refry them. Plus they're still in this pot. This pot is still hot from boiling for three hours. So technically they are frying on the bottom of the pot as I'm mashing them because it's still hot. You can see the steam coming out. So they are technically being refried. And I like them this way. I don't want to actually fry them again. They taste really good like this. One of the important things is you're going to have to taste this before you stuff the burritos because if there's not enough salt, main thing. You won't have a chance to add it later. Now, I know we added a third of a cup of salt, but there was a lot of water there. So you might be surprised when you taste this that it actually still needs salt. In a minute I will. I don't know if you can see in here. Can you see those beans? <laughs> hard with the lighting. Mash them a little more. And now I want to throw in my onion. Remember the raw onion that we did before? Just throw it in. And mash that in to the mashed beans. And the heat from these beans and the pot is going to start wilting the onion. They'll finish cooking on the grill when we grill the burrito, but for now, the heat will will be on between the hot beans and the pot itself still being hot. If you see any big chunks of onion, if something didn't get minced properly, just pull it out if you want, or you can just leave it and somebody will get a piece of onion. If you like onion, it's no problem. Now you'll notice these beans are very soft, so I don't need the liquid. Sometimes when you mash them, they will get dry and they'll be too hard. And so that's when you have to add some more of the liquid. That's why you save that, just in case. That's like insurance. Because if you didn't save it and then the beans were too stiff, what would you dilute them with? Water? That would, you'd lose all that flavor from that broth. These are all mixed. I'm going to move the broth out of the way. I'm still not going to throw it out there. Here. Get rid of this one. I don't need this anymore. Okay. All right, so now we've got our mashed beans. Time for a taste. I've got a plastic fork. I've got to make sure there's enough salt, especially. I don't think I've ever tasted these that I didn't have to add salt. And that's after adding a third of a cup. So I'm going to take a palmful, sprinkle it in, mix that in well. You notice I keep switching hands. I'm ambidextrous, right handed and left. I was born left handed, but at the time when I was born, it was considered a bad omen to be left-handed, so I was trained to use my right hand. 
which is good because now I use them both. Okay, let's try this again. Yes. You have to taste test your foods. It's very important. Wonderful flavor. Wait till you taste these beans. They're so good. You could just eat them like this, put some cheese. But we are making burritos. So, so now I've got a tray to use. I'm going to have to move the camera around a little bit here and there because I'm going to get this out of the way. Now, a lot of stuff to wash. There. Now, I've got two kinds of flour tortillas. These are from a Mexican market down the street, and they have more shortening in them. If you look at them, you can see they're more opaque, uh, different than the solid white flour tortillas that you buy in the grocery store, the Mission. They're both good. These will make for a crispier grilled burrito. These a little softer. It doesn't really matter. Um, I don't know how many I'll get out of this batch of beans, so I'm going to start with some of the softer ones, and then I'm also going to do some of the others, so I have an assortment. Open both packs. Alright, now, the cheese. Normally I keep in the house a brick of Monterey Jack cheese, almost always. But last time I went to the grocery store a few days ago, I forgot to put it on my list, so I'm here without my Monterey Jack cheese. And normally I would take that brick of cheese, get the cheese grater out, and I would grate the cheese. Excuse me, one minute. There, the screen had a display on it, it was driving me out. But just to show you, you can use whatever's in the house for these things. I have Sargento Ultra Thin Colby Jack cheese slices. So what we're going to do, and these are really good, so they're going to make a nice complement to the inside of the burrito. What we're going to do is separate some of these. They're not easy because they're ultra thin. But you got to make sure you get all that paper out. There's paper between each slice. I want to cook paper in the burrito. Somebody get a nasty surprise when they go to eat their burrito if there's a piece of paper in there. We're going to do three burritos. Well, three or four. I have to see how it's going to fit on that grill. I think just three is enough at a time. So I'm peeling the cheese. And then I'm going to cut those in half. Each burrito will only get half of a slice of cheese. You don't want too much. Just enough for flavor. If you like a lot of cheese and you buy the brick of Monterey Jack, you can put a lot in there. But I wouldn't put too much because when you go to grill it, the cheese will melt and start coming out and make a mess out of your grill and then you'll be really unhappy. <laughs> Believe me, you won't like that. Okay, so let's take one of these. So here's one of the white tortillas. And hopefully you can see me here. And I need a scoop spoon. I need two of them. Scoop out some of your beans. And it's okay if some of the beans are still a little bit whole in there. And spread them out. Now I like a lot of filling in mine, so I kind of make quite a bit in there. Okay. So can you see that? All right. Next thing is the cheese. So we'll put a slice of cheese right over the beans. And then lastly, I use La Victoria mild red taco sauce. If you like hot stuff, 
go ahead and buy the hot one, but since sometimes people eat these that really can't tolerate hot, I use this one. Just put some, dab some on there. Squeeze some on. Not a lot, because it'll leak out. And now you have to roll these, so you start rolling the end here, kind of like you do with spring rolls. Fold up the sides, to close it in, and then continue rolling slowly, otherwise the filling will come out. Just roll it up. There. Tuck in any ends that are sticking out. And see it? Here's your burrito. I'm going to get a plate to sit that on because I want to grill at least three at a time. So I'm just going to sit this aside on a plate because I have to move the camera to show you the grill. So first we'll just stuff the three. And this goes really fast once you get started with this. As it's, they're grilling you can do some more. Oh, these beans are so good. There's a big piece of onion. I'm going to take that. Out. So you see that? Some beans. Piece of cheese. Some red taco sauce. This taco sauce is really good. You can use it on the burritos after they're cooked too. Okay, fold this up, fold the sides in, continue to roll, looks like a little envelope. If you've ever done spring rolls, it's similar, not quite the same. The spring roll, you like tighten it, you don't want to tighten it. These you leave loose. Do one more before we do the grill. My masher is still in there in case I see some beans that really didn't get mashed right. I still can mash them up. But they look okay right now. You can see I'm putting a lot. Actually, that's too much. <laughs> I'm trying to put a lot of beans. I really like. When I make stuff, I like it filled. I, I want to taste the filling. Like I mentioned, I think, about the tamales earlier. I like these to have plenty of filling. I don't want to taste flour tortilla, I want to taste beans, cheese, and the sauce. Okay, now you can also fold the sides in first and then roll. You can do it either way, or roll it up first and then fold in the sides. It works out the same in the end, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so there we are. There's another one. So now I've got three. And I'm going to move the camera so you can see the grill. Now I have two grills. I've got it behind here, excuse me. Try not to get dizzy as I move this. I'll try not to make you dizzy. I can help it. And I think you can see the grill there and the racks I have for them to cool. Okay, flip this around so I can see. All right, so here we are with, let me raise this just a little bit. No, it's too high. There, it'll have to stay like that. You don't have to see me. Okay, so this grill that I have here, this is a Hamilton Beach with removable plates and I keep it separate from the other grill I have which is a George Foreman that I use for meats and fish and things like that because the plates get not really stained but there's always a film there's something on there from the meats and things that can flavor other foods so I use this one sort of like a panini and if you have a panini grill you could use that for this recipe but uh, that's what I use this one for for stuff like grilling burritos or breads or stuff like that so the plates stay really clean of anything that might influence the flavor. So now I'm going to open this up. No, I'm not using any pan or any of that stuff on here. And we're going to put the burritos in here, three at a time. It's already preheated by the way. 
close it and three minutes we're going to time. Now normally I go back and I fill three more while I'm waiting for the grill and I just keep rotating. As these three are cooking I stuff three more and when these come off the other three go in so you just keep a constant stream until you're done. But because I'm showing you this I don't want to do that right now. So we'll just wait until this is done. And you don't hear any sizzling or anything which is fine because there's no spray. There's no reason to spray because the tortillas have shortening in them. And now I made three of the uh, white tortillas. Next we'll do you'll do the ones with that have the more shortening that are more opaque. Now, three minutes should be enough. If not, I'll give it another minute after that. I'm just gonna step over here for a minute. Mix up my beans a little more. The beans will start to dry out if you don't mix them. So just stir them around with the um, masher. And that'll keep them soft. And also I need a spatula. While I'm behind the camera and you can't see me, I'm going to grab a spatula or two. There we go. I've still got a minute and a half. These taste really good. And now what will happen after we grill these, I'm going to put them on racks and let them cool. For today, if you eat them, they'll be crispy on the outside, kind of crispy. Once you put them in the refrigerator or freezer, if you're going to freeze some of them, they'll get soft. You could always recrisp them by putting them in the toaster oven or something, but soft burritos are mainly what you usually eat. But if you like that crispiness a little bit, uh, if you eat them the same day you make them, as soon as they cool down enough, don't eat them hot because you'll burn your mouth out. Um, they'll be crispy on the outside and it's a really nice taste and they're crispy. So try that. As you're cooking them, after they've cooled down enough, have one or two and get that crisp tortilla taste. And then later on when you refrigerate them or have them in the freezer and re take them out and um, defrost them, they'll be soft. And if you like them soft, not hard, just wait, put them in the refrigerator, or even if you just leave them out till they're really cold, then they'll soften up. Because the filling inside, the beans and the cheese and that taco sauce eventually soaks through into the tortilla and will soften it. Okay, let's see what we got here. And you can see it's just a light brown. And I can, if I tap it, you can feel it's a little bit crispy. I'm going to let it cook just one more minute. The first set that you do, because the grill hasn't been used yet, uh, for some reason it doesn't heat exactly right the first time. Even my other one is like that. So the first batch, usually I have to leave it a little bit longer than the three minutes, but from now on after that, usually three minutes is more than enough. You don't want it to get too dark, and you don't want the filling to start melting out, which would be mainly the cheese and the red sauce. So just one more minute, and then they'll come out. And then I'm going to go and just keep going. I'll go one more time. I'll show you how to roll them, put them on the grill, and then after that, I'm just going to keep making them until they're done, and I'll show you the final result. But you have the idea now. You know how to make the beans. The refried beans, which are really good. And you could save some of those refried beans and just eat them like that or sprinkle cheese on them, eat them with cheese. Now I hear this. Okay. See, now they're kind of brown. I don't want them too brown. So the grill is now fully hot, I can tell. And what's nice is if some does spill out, like here some cheese came out, because it's non-stick, the grill, you can just push it off with the spatula. Close the grill so it reheats. And I'll show you these here. See? Aren't they nice? You see the grill marks on there? And 
these will be crispy for a while until they really get completely cold, which will be a couple of hours at least. But I set these inside in my dining room on the table until they all cool off. Of course, there's only three on here, so I'll wait till I have some more. I'll just spread them out here. We'll be putting three more. Okay, so let's go roll some more. i got to move the camera. Sorry. My kitchen is very tiny. I just don't have room. So I'm going to bring the camera back here again. So you can see. Bouncy, bouncy. There we are. All right. Okay. Flip this around. I gotta flip my screen, otherwise I can't see what I'm doing. I can't tell what you. If you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna rinse my hands now since I've been touching so much stuff. And let's this time let's use those other tortillas. I can show you the difference. This one's too small. I don't know if you can see this on this tortilla, but it's you can almost see through because of all the lard that's in here, the vegetable shortening. It could be either one, actually. They use both. So. Okay, so here we go again. We're putting the beans on here. Spread them out. Not too close to the edge. You have to leave room to fold that up, that side up. So beans, slice of cheese, pat it down on the beans, and mild taco sauce. If you put too much, don't worry about it. It's not that terrible. It might leak out as you're grilling it all. Fold it, roll it, push the sides in, roll slowly. You got to do this slow. If you go too fast, you'll smush the filling and it'll squirt out. And in one of these tortillas, they didn't cut right. It's too small. So take that one. Scoop out your beans. Now, another reason to keep going with this is because as the beans sit out, they're going to start to firm up. Eventually they'll dry and they'll be hard, so you have to keep going. Now had I saved my liquid, you could mix more liquid back in there again to re-soften them, but normally I don't because I keep going and I get done before the beans harden. Squirt on your taco sauce. Just drops here and there. It's you don't want too much because somebody who wants the taco sauce can put it on afterwards when they're eating the burritos. Roll it up gently. Tuck in the ends as you roll. There it is. Set it on the plate. One more. And then I'm going to go back to the white ones again. I actually like the other ones better. I wanted to show you both. And you can do whichever one you prefer, of course. These are so good. And the beans, right now if you've made this, your house should smell like the finest Mexican restaurant. Anybody who comes to your house now will be asking you, what smells so good? Believe me, <laughs> I've made this many times, and believe me, anybody who smells that goes nuts. Roll it up, roll it up, roll it up. Slowly but surely. There we go, tuck in any loose corners. Okay, time to go back to the grill, which means i got to move the camera one more time. 
And I'll do this one more time with the grill and then after that I'm just going to go ahead and make them all and show you the final result. Because I can't keep moving the camera, I'm going to make both of us dizzy. You and me. Okay. There we go. Alright, so here we go. I've got three more here. I'm going to put on the grill. Carefully. Make sure the open end is down. I didn't mention that last time, but if you put the open end up, it's going to leak. Three minutes. Push back. And, oops, I always forget to flip that. No Pam. There's no spray in there at all. Here's the ones we made before that are cooling, still cooling off. And you get quite a few out of this batch of beans. So normally I get maybe from 16 to 24. But I, then it depends how many beans you put in each one. Uh, I like to really stuff them pretty full, so I might get less than that. It depends on your mood. Sometimes I feel like putting more, sometimes less. But normally I'd say you could get about 16 to 24 from that one batch of the six cups of beans. I might get more than that, I don't know. Let's see. There's, let's see, 10 tortillas in each of these, so 10, 20, maybe, maybe 16. Now, if you don't have one of these uh, panini press or a grill, griddle grill, you can use a ridged uh, cast iron frying pan, which is like a grill, or you could just do it on a flat um, grill that goes on the stove, you know, like a pancake griddle. Griddle, that's the word I'm thinking. You could do that, but you won't get the lines. What's nice about this is you get those lines on there that look really nice. Um, if you do it on a griddle, you would also have to put a little bit of Pam or some kind of shortening because the entire surface of the tortilla will be on the griddle and it could stick. But you could do that, I mean, if that's all you have. But it's the best way is if you have one of these, of either a panini press or one of these grills. And if you have to use the, if you only have like a George Foreman that you use for everything, just make sure it's really clean. You get all the meat juices and grease and whatever is on there, get it all. Unless you happen to like that on your tortilla, go ahead and leave it. <laughs> I don't want that. And these are so nice. Look at this. You just pick one up. And you can eat it just like that. You can see those nice lines on there. And right now this is crispy. If you tap it, it's hard. But it will soften as the filling cools and the steam comes out. It's going to soften that. So if you like them better soft, there we go. Stop. Whoops. Those are not done. Hmm. My grill is not heating as it should for some reason, so we're going to go ahead and do another minute. If you find that when you open the grill they're not done, just leave them in a little bit longer. It doesn't hurt anything. But always check after three minutes, no more than that. Normally I find that the three minutes is enough, but for some reason today it says it's preheated, but it doesn't seem to be heating up as much. This grill has no temperature control. It has one set temperature and that's it. My George Foreman, I can change the temperature. So I can make it hotter, cooler. Now if I was using that one, I would set it to 375 for these. If you have one of those, the George Foreman with the adjustable temperature, set it to 375. And you, if it has a timer, you could set the timer on there or just use your oven timer. Almost, almost, almost. Get me. 
much better. They're not dark brown, but they're good. So it was, it's going like four minutes instead of three. But still check it at three because I found sometimes if I set it for four, if I think, oh, okay, it's going to do four, then I go to look at them and they're too dark. So just slide them off the grill onto the spatulas. That's why I use two, because these are hot. You don't want to touch them. There we go. Put a little bit of cheese on there. Scrape it off with the spatula. Close this to make sure it reheats. And so now I have a couple of darker, the three darker ones in the beginning, the lighter ones. Let's see, you can't see this. Which way? This way. There we go. There's three darker ones, three lighter ones, but they're really nice. So now I think you can see them. And I'm going to go put these in my dining room to cool down. And I'm going to stop now and continue till I'm done, and then I'll show you all of them. So see you in Okay, I'm back just for a minute. I'm still cooking, getting quite a few. I just wanted to show you that one of the first ones I made has cooled down enough to eat, so you know that they're good. Mmm. They're really good. Cheese has melted, the onions are cooked. There's that little bit of taco sauce in there. Great. You have to try these. Okay, I'm going to continue. I'll be back. Okay, here we are. I finished grilling all those burritos, rolling them, stuffing them, grilling. And I ended up, let's see, there's one, two, three, six back there, six up here. And I'm going to move over because there's more. There's another rack with seven. That's 19. And six more, so I ended up with 25 grilled burritos. Pretty good, huh? It's nice for a big family, or you can... Uh, they're good in the refrigerator, like for seven days, wrapped in aluminum foil. And in the freezer, forever. You know, you can wrap them in wax paper and foil, put them in the freezer, take them out whenever you want. You could microwave them or put them in a toaster oven if you want them a little bit crispy. But there they are. And I can do a little close-up too. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Nice, huh? Want one? I think you do. <laughs> I hope you try this recipe. Those beans are amazing. You'd really be surprised. And the smell in your house, it'll last a couple of days. It'll make you want to eat even more of them, believe me. So, thanks for watching. This is Paolo Mauli. And I hope you enjoy this recipe and give it a try one day soon. Thanks for watching.